There really is no point in making another documentary about the moon landings being faked, because no matter how many times one can nitpick, the message is not received. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The patriots gullible to the American media will absolutely deny what is considered to be unpatriotic. Astronomers will do their best to avoid this theory for the sake of their credibility, much like the astronomers who refuse to believe that the Earth revolved around the Sun and not vice versa. All right, well, I just have this one quick question. Uh, what do you believe? What do you think of the, uh, the conspiracy theories that uh, the moon missions didn't happen? Uh, uh, that's a good question. I think it is just that—a conspiracy theory. I, I don't think it's. Uh, I, I believe firmly that uh, man did land on the moon. Uh, and uh, and so I think it's just a little bit of rubbish. Most of the conspiracy stuff. What would be what would be the um, the uh, number one piece of uh, concrete evidence that you'd um, offer to um, to support the the reality of the moon missions? Well, I think there's two things, but now that's your second question, so you're just going to ask me okay. one. Okay. I, I think yeah. that uh, the uh, the uh, rock and soil that was brought back, I think, is probably the number one thing. And most of all, the internet is quickly cluttered with websites opposing the theory. From an analytical standpoint, many of these websites have comparatively less compelling arguments against the conspiracy theory and more unfounded character attacks against the messenger. It's going to take a whole lot of one's time and energy to comment on all of them, and a whole lot more effort to comment on their obnoxious defamation without getting pissed off. But for now, there are a number of points I'd like to back up. Firstly, one of the most persistent conspiracy claims is that the photography was done using multiple spotlights. On the moon, the astronauts' only source of light was the sun. They had no extra lighting, uh, no flashes or things like that. Yet in this photograph from Apollo 14, the shadows are cast in different directions, suggesting multiple light sources. The shadows cast by the rocks in the foreground should have been east-west, like the Lem shadows. And in this photo from Apollo 17, again the shadows are pointing in different directions. Outside in sunlight, shadows always run parallel with one another, so the shadows will never intersect. It is clear that these scenes were lit with artificial light. These shadows, which are cast at different angles, are evidence that a second light source is being used. In addition, the sun would not cause an isolated hotspot like this, only an artificial light would. Again, intersecting shadows and another hotspot. And again. And again. It is simply impossible for this picture to have been taken with sunlight on the moon. This image in A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, taken from Apollo 17, is one of the most damning photos I've come across. There are so many things wrong with the lighting in it. Interestingly, one of the first arguments I come across when the unparalleled shadows claim is brought up is that if there are multiple spotlights used, why are the objects not casting multiple shadows? The use of multiple spotlights does not automatically mean you'll get an object to cast two shadows at once. That all comes down to the position of the object. Suppose at night you were equally spaced between two lampposts. You will cast two shadows, each pointing in the opposite direction of its counterpart. However, if you walk closer to one of those lights, the shadow cast by the further light source will start to vanish. This is because the excess light from the closer light source is filling in the secondary shadow and washing it out. Further, the propagandists needed only to look up this image to find multiple shadows. See? 
The rock to the left of the astronaut's leg shadow near the corner, which for obvious reasons I've dubbed as the double dasher, is casting two shadows. Think this is Photoshop? The link you see on your screen is a high resolution of this image where you can see for yourself. As damning as it is, the double dasher is only one problem with this image. The astronaut's shadow and the shadow of the rock to the right of the astronaut's head are converging at a near 90 degree angle. Typically, the explanation given for unparalleled shadows is perspective, like the lines that one sees on a road. Let's see if such a counterclaim holds merit. Noted that the astronaut's shadow and the rock shadow are at the most a couple feet away from one another. Here's a clip from the NASA endorsed counter documentary, The Truth Behind the Moon Landings. In our experiment in the desert, we shot a variety of photographs using different film formats. In this 35mm photograph, we see that the shadows of the crew members in our single light source very distinctly converge together. In fact, there's almost a 90 degree difference in, a, in the apparent shadow direction. Let's have another look at Jay Winley's photograph. You can immediately see that the near 90 degree angle he speaks of occurs with shadows that have a vast space between each other. The blue line represents the distance between the two. There is no significant converge between the shadows that are more closely together. In addition, here are some photographs that I have come up with, using only the sun as my light source. In this photograph, although perspective is causing my, the trash cans, and the bus stop shadows to converge, there is simply no significant angle change between the ones that are close together. The only shadows that are converging at a degree that makes up even a fraction of a 90 degree angle are clearly way too far apart. The darkness makes it difficult to see, so in this one I've measured the space between the two with an orange line. You can immediately see that the shadows that are separated at a very narrow space are running relatively parallel and are making no significant converge at all. In this photograph, we have my shadow, the shadows of the poles, as well as the shadow of another man. Keeping in mind the dimensions of the shadow converge in the Apollo image, we can immediately see that even shadows separated at a further distance from each other will not converge at a near 90 degree angle. In fact, you can easily see how in this picture all the shadows are near parallel. Here, I've moved a little to the left, and you can clearly see the little distance between my shadow and that of the other man's. Although our shadows have begun to converge because of perspective, there is almost no significant change in shadow angles at all. Here I am standing by another pole. Again, there is very little converging between the two narrowly parted shadows. No 90 degree angle. So, if shadows spaced apart even further can't converge at a near 90 degree angle on Earth with the aid of perspective, how can it be possible that perspective would cause such a drastic change in direction with two shadows so close together on the Moon? Here's also some video footage for you to chew on. It should be clear now that neither Windley or I can recreate such a shadow angle with perspective. Incidentally, the narrator of the documentary Windley starred in acknowledged that there are near 90 degree converges, but the editor doesn't actually show any of these photos in question, such as the one we've been talking about, for the viewer to compare with Windley's results. In others, the shadows are at near right angles. Is this because they were lit by separate light sources? But let's ignore what our photos have to say. Let's ask an expert on perspective.